What's up everyone? Welcome back to Sports Weekly with Seb. I am so sorry it's been so long since my last video. I've just been up to my neck with a whole lot of paperwork for Michigan State University and there's just been so much going on so it's not long left until I get over there but I thought I'd get a video out there. I have been able to watch some basketball fortunately. Went out to the NBL this week as Adelaide downed uh, the Sydney Kings at home. Uh, which was a great game to watch, but before we move on, I'd like to make this video just uh, about my early season predictions on MVP uh, for the NBA season coming up. Westbrook sees a seam and takes it, and I mean, and how he takes it. Yeah, what I like is he's strutting his stuff afterwards because he knew he did something special on that play. All right, so the obvious choice is Russell Westbrook for number one, and there's a million reasons why. He's had 10 triple doubles so far this season. He had 18 in all of last year, and so far he's only played 20 games. He's averaging a triple double right now, 31 points, 10 rebounds, and 11 assists. Now those are just some ludicrous numbers now that Kevin Durant's left. He's really going out there to prove that this is, that this is his team. Now can he win MVP? Now it's going to be hard because currently the Thunder sit at 11 and eight, but are they gonna win enough games to actually get him in contention in the end? Uh, it's all about winning games in the NBA, and Westbrook can't get them to that position. If they sneak into the bottom eighth seed in the Western playoff, then maybe. But if they don't even make the playoffs full stop, then it's going to be a very hard case to make. But regardless, this might set a precedent, because if they don't make the playoffs and Westbrook wins MVP, it could really change the landscape moving forward and how people get judged on whether they should take home MVP, MVP honors or whether they shouldn't. Not to mention the fact Westbrook's usage rate is at an all-time high. So while he does have those turnovers in his game, I would more than happily take a 50-point triple-double with eight turnovers than not. It's me. In fact, uh, last night it looked like Harden had to go to the bounce pass. Here's Harden from the outside. That's a welcome basket for James Harden. And a 10-0 run by Houston. My number two pick, and this might be a little bit biased just because I'm a Houston fan, but it's our new point guard, James Harden. He's been doing really well at the point guard position in the Mike D'Antoni system, playing so well in the newly adjusted role. He's averaging uh, 28, sorry, he's averaging 29 points and 12 assists per game, getting a lot of players involved, and so far he's had three triple doubles of his own. So look out for Harden to be pushing for MVP, but it's definitely a similar case to Westbrook. The Rockets are shooting so many threes this season, but if they're not going to be able to play defense on the other end of the floor, then they might not have any chance of actually making the playoffs to start with. No difference between the game and shot clock. So this will be the final touch of it for the Rockets as Hart will isolate here on Shumpert. Now on Jefferson. Steps right, fires up a three. Looks good, and it is as he beats the buzzer. My only problem with Harden is that he's still not playing great defense, but I suppose scoring so many points and doing so much for the team on the offensive end kind of makes up for it. But in the end, it's definitely an overall award that needs to be given. When you have players like Kawhi Leonard who does it on both ends of the floor equally, it kind of makes it hard for voters to choose Harden over anyone else. The Nuggets. Anthony Davis, he got the spot. It's even at a dozen. So my last pick is a bit of a left field, but it kind of has to be with this sort of race, and it's still so early on in the NBA, but, and he was my pick for it last year, Anthony Davis. Now the Pelicans started 0-8, which was a little bit concerning, but that was without Drew Holiday, who had to tend to his wife who had a tumor in her brain, and hopefully she recovers uh, quite quickly. But Davis has been averaging 32 points and 11 rebounds, and those kind of numbers can't be denied. Now, they're going to have to really turn their form around because after starting so poorly, they're really starting to play, the Pelicans are starting to play pretty well. Like I said with Westbrook and Harden, the Pelicans are really going to have to win some games to get Davis into the MVP conversation. And this feels like a make or break year for the Pelicans. After losing Ryan Anderson and Eric Gordon and replacing them with Etwan Moore and next to no one, they're going to have to really pick it up in order to keep him. I mean, his free agency comes in 2020. While he did sign that huge deal in the offseason, Season, they still have to worry about whether uh, Davis is going to want to stay or not. I mean, no one likes to lose games. No one likes to lose games in this fashion. So with the return of Drew Holiday, it's certainly a step forward with the Pelicans. But can Anthony Davis really take home the MVP? Definitely an outsider, but who knows? Thank you everyone so much for watching. I'm so sorry this video took so long to actually get out there, but now it's live. You can all enjoy it. If you have any questions, hit me up on Twitter. And don't forget to follow my Facebook page. That's just Sebastian Quinn. And I'll see you all in the next video.